Welcome back to another iDoctor UK video. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step instructions on how to replace the charging port or lightning connector on the iPhone XS. To begin the repair, make sure that you turn off the phone, then take a pentalobe screwdriver and remove the two bottom screws either side of the lightning port. Now that they're removed, take a single sided razor blade and insert it in the gap between the plastic bezel on the screen and the metal chassis of the phone. Gently pry upwards to create a larger gap, just big enough to fit a plastic guitar pick in there. Remove the blade and then run the opening pick along the right hand edge, bottom edge and the left hand edge of the phone. This will release the screen from the chassis and because the top edge is clipped in we don't need to use a prying tool on that instead we just wiggle it about a little bit and then lift upwards to open the phone placing a heavy object like a mug behind the screen will stop the screen from falling over allowing us to work inside the phone with the screen still attached use a tri-wing screwdriver now to release the four tri-wing screws although there's one missing on this one the missing one's just there look and then a crosshead screw to remove the single crosshead screw from this little shield here. You can then use tweezers to lift up that shield and move it out of the way. Then use a plastic prying tool to disconnect the battery, isolating power from the phone. Use the same plastic tool to disconnect the flex for the top ear speaker sensor, the display connector, and finally the touch one on the bottom. That means we can lift the screen away now and store it safely for reinstallation later. To remove the charging port on this one, you do need to remove the logic board from the phone. So use the plastic prying tool to disconnect all the flex cables that are attached to the motherboard. There's two more flex cables that are hidden just under the camera flex here. So pop the camera out with a prying tool, hold it forwards, and then use the prying tool again to disconnect those two flex cables just up here. We can now pop the SIM tray out. Then there's three crosshead screws securing the motherboard to the chassis of the phone. Make sure that this little pin for the SIM tray is pushed into the chassis and then get some tweezers under that corner to lift out the logic board and store it safely for later. We can now peel up this part of the flex cable for the charging port, freeing it up for when we pull it out in a bit. To access the bottom part of the lightning connector, we need to remove the Taptic engine and loudspeaker, as well as a couple of other screws down the bottom here. I'll start left to right with these two screws holding down the Taptic engine. And before we start making a mess with all these screws, I will recommend using one of these magnetic mats just to keep all the screws in order and place them down in the order that you took them out. Next, there's another crosshead screw in the bottom left and another one just next to that one followed by a tri-wing screw just below the T on the Taptic engine. There's two crosshead screws to remove now, either side of the lightning connector, and another one just above the lightning connector, holding down the flex cable for the Taptic engine. The last one on this top layer is just here on the loudspeaker. Releasing that means that we can now remove this metal shield from here, as well as this one from here. Use your plastic prying tool to release this flex cable, then use tweezers to lift out the loudspeaker. Use the prying tool again to disconnect the Taptic engine, and then again with the tweezers to remove it. There are two crosshead screws in the bottom right underneath the loudspeaker. Remove those, then take a standoff screwdriver to release the two standoff screws either side of the lightning connector. There's another standoff screw holding down this plastic shield and one last standoff screw 
in this bottom left corner. Lift up this plastic shield that holds the microphone in place. There should be another screw just here, but it seems to be missing already on this one. So we'll skip that and stand the phone up on its end. Now lift up this plastic shield that holds the barometer sensor and microphone in place, which should reveal two more screws over here. As you can see, one of them is missing from there, but we'll take this one out from here. That should just about free the charging port now. So to lift it up, we're gonna start up the top where we released it before and begin pulling outwards to lift it from underneath the battery, pry from underneath this part of the flex cable and remove the lightning connector. And that means that the lightning cable is now fully removed from our chassis. We'll go and get our new flex cable now and begin reassembling it. The part that we're using is a pulled genuine part and it's important to get the right part because the barometer sensor on aftermarket parts will cause a three minute boot loop and problems after reinstallation. To reinstall the charging port, pull this cable out of the way, this little antenna cable, and then carefully slide the new port underneath the edge of the battery. It's a little bit fiddly to get this right, but it definitely beats pulling out the batteries on this one because they are difficult to remove. Once we've got that in place, we can line up the lightning connector, making sure that the holes line up properly. The next step is to install the two crosshead screws that secure the bottom of the charging port to the edge of the chassis. Make sure you do this step now because there won't be another chance to do it once we've installed more screws. I'll also make sure that we install the new screw where the other one was missing. Following that, we're going to tuck this plastic part back into place just here and then make sure that that barometer sensor goes into place just there. Now we can begin reinstalling those standoff screws that we removed, starting with the leftmost one just here. For the one next to it, you have to reinstall the plastic jig first before screwing down the standoff screw. Then there's the two on the left and right of the lightning connector itself. Then we'll move on to the two small grounded screws on that antenna, which I don't think we should have removed realistically, but there's nothing I can do about that now. Now will also be a good time to get this grounded screw what was missing reinstalled. Let's go ahead and install the Taptic engine now. Use the plastic spudger to make sure that the flex cable clips into place nicely and then secure it into place with the two crosshead screws on the left hand side. And before we re-secure this one here, we'll reinstall the loudspeaker first. That's held down with one crosshead screw on the right. And then the flex cable for it can be reattached using the plastic spudger before we reinstall the little metal shield that goes on there and the single crosshead screw. This metal shield goes on top now. There's another one just to the left of it. The one tri-wing screw just below the Taptic engine and the two crosshead screws in the bottom left corner. Just perform a quick visual check to make sure that there's no missing screws now. And then we'll begin reinstalling the logic board. Resecure those three crosshead screws that hold the board onto the chassis. 
I'm just looking at this now and I think it's actually just two what hold it there. And then the one that was missing goes through the shield once we've reinstalled that. I'll fold up the cameras again and use the plastic spudger to help us reconnect the Wi-Fi cable just here. And the other antenna cable. And then use tweezers to guide the trunk camera back into place. Now we'll start reconnecting all these flex cables starting from the top for the cameras and the power button, the front camera cable, infrared cable or face ID cable, whichever it is, lining connector, front camera again or, or infrared, whichever one it is. I always get mixed up. Then there's the wireless charging coil and volume buttons just here and finally this bottom antenna. We'll leave the battery connector unattached while we reinstall the screen and then remove the old dust and moisture resistant seal so that we can install the new one. Make sure that even just the smallest bit of adhesive is removed. Then add a couple of drops of isopropyl alcohol to the edges and carefully brush away any remaining sticky stuff so that the chassis is nice and clean. Depending on how dirty the phone is, you might have to do this a couple of times and it really will provide a nice clean surface for our new dust and moisture resistant seal. Now that that's clean, I'll peel off the first film of our new seal and I always attach it in the top left corner first, line it up along the left hand edge and that should align it for the rest of the phone. I'll use a spudger now to flatten the adhesive right into the chassis to make sure that it's stuck all the way around, then use tweezers to peel off that first layer of the film. We can now reattach the screen by attaching the three flex cables into place, then finally reconnect the battery into its connector. I'll pop the mug back behind the phone now so that it doesn't fall over. I'm not happy about leaving this single screw missing. Just looking at it, I think it needs a standoff screw. We'll get the standoff screw in the board first, then the shield on top of that, and then go for the screws in the bottom, the one above that. We'll skip that middle one for now because I've got the tri-wing screwdriver in my hand and then install another tri-wing screw into that top one that we just reinstalled. And finally, a crosshead screw just in the middle here. I don't think I would have been able to sleep tonight knowing that that was missing. You can see there's a final blue film to lift up on the dust and moisture resistant seal. Carefully peel that back all the way around. If you find that it peels off a little bit, just rub it back into place with your spudger and then try and peel it back again. To reinstall the screen, place the top of the screen into the place first and make sure that it clips into place and then apply pressure down the edges of the phone until it clips into place. Finally, we've got the two pentalobe screws in the bottom of the device. Reinstall those. Reinstall the SIM tray. And then a good way to start testing the device is to plug it into the lightning cable to make sure that it prompts the phone to boot like that. Then we can carry out testing to the vibration motor loudspeaker, microphone, and all other functionality. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that it's been helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.